Is there enough lithium being mined to supply the explosive growth in lithium-ion battery production? Goldman Sachs recently downgraded lithium producers, citing overproduction. But I think they are wrong, and so far their conviction is not shared by many other analysts and firms out there. I mean, sure, it's probably one of the most abundant metals on Earth, but I have done some digging in the production forecasts of the world's biggest producers, and the forecasts have come up way short. Now, it's not just me that thinks this. The theme has been echoed in Albemarle presentations, as well as Jiangchu, and here is one from Standard Lithium. Even investment banks like Deutsche Bank have chipped in on the forecast supply shortfall. So stick with me while I bring up my own desktop data for comparison. To understand the lithium carbonate equivalent pipeline, we need to first analyze the raw material inputs. LCEs come from three primary sources, brines, hard rock deposits, and clays. A fourth source is recycling, but I think this is only likely to be a dominant means of supply around 2030 or so. Now the reason it is important to understand this is because the raw material from hard rock and clay mining is really not much use to a battery manufacturer. Their end product is something referred to as lithium concentrate, and it is easy to get confused when putting global production figures together because many of these miners refer to this in their production totals. Brine miners are traditionally the lowest cost producers, and this is the most established form of LCE production. Their primary product is lithium carbonate, which is falling out of favor with battery manufacturers. This product still needs to be converted into lithium hydroxide, which typically happens at a separate plant, more often than not by separate downstream companies. Spodamine mining gets us crushed rock then roasted spodamine, then acid dissolved to form lithium concentrate. This is then supplied to lithium hydroxide factories that can produce the finished good. Now you get hard rock and then you get hard rock. Not all have the same levels of yield. Spodamine is measured by the percentage of lithium contained in it. So typically we get spodamine 6 or 8, meaning 6 or 8% yield. But this is the spodamine itself. The original rock also only yields around 6 or 7% spodamine. So you have to crush a hell of a lot of it to get your final product. Clay mining is a bit more versatile in its output. They can produce either lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, but there are not many clay miners out there. The mining technique is still very much unutilized, primarily because lithium is typically found in very small quantities in clays, making this mining method a lot less efficient than its counterparts. Now the output of all these mining techniques gives us either lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. These are essential for the production of NMC or NCA battery chemistries, the batteries we typically see in EVs today. So far, I have done my analysis on 16 of the world's largest producers. Doubtless, there are others that I haven't found yet, so this research is far from definitive, but I'm pretty confident that these represent the bulk of the world's refined supply. There might be more hard rock sources, but I'm not tracking lithium concentrate. There are just too many potential sources of various levels of dodgy quality and yield. Now to give an indication of who the biggest players are, here is a chart showing their 2030 forecasts. Clearly, SQM, Albemarle and Jiangxi are the biggest players by far. What is missing here is anything coming out of Bolivia. Bolivia has the world's largest brine reserves and a company was formed in 2017 to commercialize the production. Currently they have some pilot projects producing a couple of hundred tons, so inconsequential at the moment. But the tenders are out to ramp up production but we have very little information about when they will launch, how much they will produce, I've seen target figures of around 15,000 tons, and what they will produce, either lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. I also wanted to comment on the very small contribution by Tesla. I don't have much information on Tesla's vertical integration approach here, other than a 160,000 ton spodamine supply agreement with Piedmont, and their own lithium clay deposits in Nevada. It is likely Tesla will ramp this up considerably but by how much is anyone's guess. Now let's look at the ramp up. Here you can see how production increases. It is important to note that lithium hydroxide, the more important of the two LCE chemistries, is only around 50% of total production. And finally, let's look at what this means for battery production. We need around 850 tons per gigawatt hour. If we just look at what the top battery manufacturers are claiming will be their manufacturing capabilities, I get a chart that looks like this. A bit messy, I know, but I wanted to show how aggressively the big players are taking this. And this is definitely not a definitive list, as there are a number of new manufacturers entering the space as well. 
With a sheer pace of demand, you can bet that all manner of innovative companies are going to be attracted to the sector. Some companies, like Samsung SDI, are notoriously cagey about their production volumes and growth, but I've managed to piece together some information from various news articles. So taking the forecasted gigawatt hour growth into consideration, we can easily calculate how much lithium carbonate equivalent will be needed. In blue, I have figures that I have lifted from the Statistica website, which correlate more or less with several other forecasts that are out there. In grey are my own calculations, based on the previous graph that I just posted. Now we can plot the actual production forecasts in the yellow line. You can see we start to run into trouble in two years from now. Now please note the following. The yellow line represents the theoretical output, not the actual. Miners never hit the actual number. This will explain why, even though there is an apparent surplus right now, lithium hydroxide is currently trading at a spot price of $32,000 per tonne, up from $9,000 a tonne in November 2020. So in summary, lithium miners are sitting in the sweet spot right now. They produce one of the most strategic products on earth and I believe many of them are grossly undervalued. I also believe that major manufacturers cannot ignore the aggressive acquisition strategy Chinese companies have been on in the last few years, and that independent, profitable companies like Livent, my top pick in this sector, are ripe acquisition targets. I hope this helps. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening.